Welcome to 32 Bar Cut, the show, a show where we talk with our friends about what it's like to be a performer. Today on 32 Bar Cut, the show, we are sitting down with Michael James Scott. It's time to welcome on our guest, my favorite by far, a Broadway star. Michael James Scott. On 32 Bar seen him granting wishes in Agrava or keeping it Fosse in the national tour of Fosse, but today he is sitting down with us and telling us about what it is like to be a professional performer. Welcome to the show, Michael James Scott. Yes! Come on, <laughs> come on now, 32 bar. Yes. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. First of all, can we talk about the intro song? Come <laughs> yes. on. Austin like, wrote that. Austin wrote that. <laughs> I love it. Are you? Is that you on the top soprano? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I recognize that voice. We have done, uh, uh, you know, uh, a medley of subs of sorts and yes, scenes during this crazy pandemic. <laughs> and you're always on the top, living <laughs> your. <laughs> I was like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> It's awesome. I Thank love it. You. I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you love it. We've had we've had a lot of fun designing this whole show and so the little jingle at the beginning is is definitely a highlight for us. So <laughs> It's just keeping in line with all the fabulous for all of you listeners and viewers out there. Just know that you are in fierce capable hands with these this amazing <laughs> team. So it's just it's just in line with how amazing y'all are cuz backstage on the backstage end that your viewers <laughs> and your listeners don't see is fiercely organized <laughs> just so we are all clear okay <laughs> oh i'm just putting God. that out there just a little shout out i know i'm putting you on the spot but i'm just telling everybody what the real tea is going on because it's amazing so i you know. i love it look whenever i'm having a bad day i'm about to call you up because you're gonna <laughs> make me feel amazing <laughs> so how have you been how are you doing how are you navigating i um how are you doing Oh my gosh, the the uh, after twenty twenty, the year of the pivot, I call it. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I just how am I? I am I I am I am well. Uh, all things considered, I think that I am still. I still to this day am uh, am in like a uh, what's the word um, uh, <laughs> of <laughs> numbness to mm. all of it yeah. um, because it feels so, it still feels so, I am in reality of it, but it still feels so crazy and so distant from what we were ever, ever wanting to imagine for ourselves and for our lives, for our community, for our world and all the things that um, it's still hard for me to wrap my head around even almost a year into. It just, it's still hard for me to wrap my brain around it. However, I am, I am grateful that I am healthy. I am grateful that my husband is healthy. I am grateful that uh, we are together, that the family is together. Like literally all the basic necessities, like when you, when you strip it down and it's like water and sleep, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. like all of the sort of like that sort of thing is, is, is all good. And I am, uh, as I've, as I've said, I've said a couple of times, but at the beginning of this, I had a big conversation with a very dear friend of mine and she said, we have to breathe through the uncomfortableness, like this idea of breathing through the uncomfortableness of it all. And I, that has been in my head this whole time, which is sort of like, breathing through it that it is okay like allow myself to be okay with the ups and the downs and like that it is very unnormal uh, like this unnatural for what we are going through well i guess it is natural because it would be a natural progression of like in terms of like viruses and pandemics in the world like yeah it just i didn't expect it to happen during our lifetime <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you never so expect it, it to happen to you, right? You're like, yeah. if, I don't expect the rapture to come along, you know, any day now. Right. But, but now maybe, hey, I don't know. But now I might, you know, <laughs> Jesus may come on now. He you might know what just, he, <laughs> Jesus is the light. I mean, he just might show up in the sky. I don't know. <laughs> it's funny that anything you, is possible. Anything like, is truly. possible. That, Anything. Yeah, I've definitely learned that from this year. And when you talk about breathing through the discomfort, 
or like the, I don't remember the word you use, but it makes me think. Uncomfortableness. Uncomfortableness. Yeah. It's like, makes me think of, I've recently been doing yoga, which I've never been able to successfully maintain any kind of yoga practice. I'm like, I start, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do yoga. It's going to be great. And then I hit the mat and I'm like, oh, that downward dog. I'm not coming, you know, I'm not doing this. <laughs> but I forced myself and by force, I really mean force because for the first 35 days, I hate, I dreaded it, yeah. but I started to appreciate it. And then I started to look forward to it. And I think it's because I saw growth. I saw uh, a lot of breathing through the uncomfortableness and mm-hmm. it, it it's it's like that it feels like a really hard yoga pose and you have to remind yourself to breathe and to it will get better and to stretch and to access the muscles and give life to the muscles just while you're going through this really uncomfortable time and it, I love it I love it well it because like as you as you're doing as well you've never given yourself uh, you know the time, the permission, the all the things to do these these things that we never did beforehand, pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, and this sort of pre-life, if you will, um, uh, BP. I say before pandemic, and mm-hmm. what that has done for us, and this idea of what we're able to do now. Yeah. You know, and what we've allowed ourselves to do now. Absolutely. I mean, it could be the simple things like being able to sit down and have dinner with your husband. It could also be the bigger things like starting a new project or the Christmas album you did in December, you know, maybe you wouldn't have had the time to to do that if you were, you know, doing eight shows in Agrabah or who else, who knows what else, because you do so many things, which we're going to talk about. But like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know your life personally, but would you have had time to do a Christmas album? No, I know. I, 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 knowing what I, how I've been in in my life and what has been sort of transpiring in my career, I, 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 a, I was actually scared of it for the longest time to do any sort of thing. So to even put myself, uh, you know, the exposure of what it, what it is when you're exposing yourself to doing an album, um, and I have been, you know, for the longest time been approached about doing it and it wasn't it wasn't until this time where again everything was thrown out the window and truly a whole new uh you know um situation happened and for me and you know we can obviously get into that too but where that came from and how that was to, like wh- why i actually did it um was truly based on where we were in this pandemic and a response, to, uh, like a direct response to um, basically everything that was going on in the world. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about it now if you want. Okay. I would love to yeah, say, I mean, sure. a fierce Christmas, right? Oh, yes, yes, sure. Absolutely. I mean, so really, I I am obsessed with Christmas, like holiday music in general. General. I've always been, I've said this before, people practice their Emmy and Oscar and like, you know, Tony speeches. I've been practicing my holiday album. I'm practicing it since <laughs> I was a little boy, right? So it's it's like, a, it's like a constant thing. This need came from me uh, out of a direct response to the fact that there was, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. There was a full you know, uh, fight for equality still happening in our country, fighting for, I mean, the fact that our country was so divided, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, more so than we'd ever been. And the big one, the the absolute racial awakening that happened. Yeah. that was brewing for years, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, as we, as we know, and this was my, resp- this was my protest. Mm. My protest was joy. I was protesting everything with joy by putting a black man's face, a face of color with a smile, mm-hmm. something a, and a light that was not shown in terms of what we were used to and seeing color and why like truly the turn is the pivotal point of George Floyd and what happened seeing that black man's face and what happened for me, it was the protest to all of this. Mm -hmm. And so my husband, um, who happens to be an Emmy award winning director, um, (laughs) which is everything and all the wonderful, I'm very, very blessed with just him as an artist. And, uh, but he, Jeremy said to me, we, he literally was like, you're getting off the couch and we are doing, we are doing this. This was in September. 
And we we released the holiday album like that. And we ended up having, he had some ties down in Orlando, which is where I'm from, um, with a record label there. And they were like, yes, let's do it. I was able to bring together, you know, this, I, the, the collaborate with, incredible Broadway musicians who oh did, who recorded, because everything is set up now remotely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had like nine musicians recording remotely um, from, you know, from New York and Jersey and all over the place. And then I went down home and then we had musicians down in Orlando and then I recorded it down in Orlando. So it was like this amazing collabor collaboration. So that's where it all came from. It literally came from uh, the response to everything at the end of the year. You know, we were, we, we, for me, it was, we all needed, I think everybody was so looking for, it's why, you know, there was, there was, if you saw all these reports of people uh, decorating for Christmas, putting up holiday decorations, like in like November 1st, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because everyone was just like, we need some, we need light. We some need cheer. joy. So mm -hmm. for me, it was about love, light and laughter. And I know if as divided as our country is still um and all the things that was going on i do know that fierce holiday music can bring people together <laughs> <laughs> amen <laughs> so that's where it came from and that i'm so proud of it and what we were able to do and i was so the, the idea of being able to put on my spin to um to classic holiday songs so that's where a fierce christmas came from and i i was like well i want you to smile from just the title <laughs> yeah. I mean, the title and, and the cover from. art, all of it was just like, ooh, you know, just bright and and, and fierce. I mean, it was amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's, you did a great job where on it that. Came from. So thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of work, um, but you know, any, any artist who has done it. And, and I know that, you know, you've recorded before and all of that, like, so, you know, as well, like it's hard, you know, it's very hard to do. Um, and it's a lot involved with pub, you know, publicity and, and you putting you out there, all the things, Yeah. but, but I tell you at the end of last year and, and, you know, from being, being able to just the all the talking that I did on panels and all kinds of things about um, the BLM movement and about um, you know being uh, a person of color within the Broadway community, being a person of color who also is a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, it, it it was literally like just sort of a release for yeah. all of it for me. So that's where it came from. Yeah, and I mean, we we are going to get into that too, probably in the curtain call. Do you want to stick around for the curtain call? Well, let me think about it. Of course, I want to stick around because <laughs> I really want to. I want to pick your brain a little bit about that too. But before we get to yes. that, I know you're from Orlando, and mm -hmm. then uh, lots of things happened. And then now you're a Broadway star. So can you fill us in on how you got from Orlando to New York and and why you wanted to become a performer? Had you always wanted to be a performer as a young kid or did it oh my gosh. hit you later in life? When, when did you know? Yes. Well, so as you said, I am from Orlando and Orlando is like the land of theme parks and, you know, um, all the, 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 you know, boy bands and like <laughs> all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was a child actor. Um, so for me, it was, uh, I had been doing, and I really started in TV and film as oh, a, wow. as a little boy. I was, I was the little chocolate chubby child in commercials and, uh, and TV shows running around Orlando, you know, Orlando is Nickelodeon, Mickey Mouse Club, yeah. um, you know, all the Disney, uh, there were so many Disney, uh, Disney studios and all that stuff is all of that, SeaWorld, I mean, literally everything, um, so many things down there. And so a lot of opportunities for child actors, which for me, you know, I, I, I really started, well, I should say, I first started in church. I really started singing in church. And once the congregation, um, you know, my audience, if you will, the congregation <laughs> said, hallelujah, and thank you, Lord, and gave me a clap, I was hooked. Okay, I was hooked. And I, I I say this because I come from a community who really like 
who really, really cares about young artists. Orlando, there's so many amazing, amazing um, uh, organizations and and groups that um, really provide for young artists. My parents moved us from Baltimore. I was born in Baltimore, uh, Maryland. They moved us down when I was about was like six, my brother and I, six, we were living in the inner city of Baltimore. They moved us to Orlando uh, because my parents did not want their boys to be a black male statistic, another black male statistic. And we happened to, we happened to go there because my aunt um, happened to be stationed in the military down in Florida and found her way to Orlando. And so that was it. There was no one else down there. My mom and dad picked up and back. At that time, they didn't know what else... And the only thing they knew was that we were living in the like heart of inner city Baltimore mm-hmm. and they wanted something different for their boys. So they packed up and left, moved down to Florida and there truly, you know, it, it's exactly what, what, what needed to happen. I mean, in terms for us, for ours, for my story, I had teachers, you know, my little uh, elementary school, middle school um I call them teachers to me are superheroes. They are the superheroes of the world. They are, they are, um, you have no idea what, you know, how you are inspired by teachers who you see something in you. And for me, it wasn't, it wasn't color. It wasn't anything. They just saw wonderment in this little child's eyes. And I had teachers say to my parents, what can we do to help? And wow. truly, that's how it all began for me. Um, and I was singing and dancing, running around Orlando, Florida, in every, you know, every fair, every, uh, you know, basketball game, baseball game, mm-hmm. singing the national anthems, doing, I mean, it was crazy. And so that's how it really started for me. And it wasn't until uh, I got into high school, I went to a performing arts high school, where uh, it was where theater where I discovered theater and I fell in love with it. And and that changed my life. And when I went to New York for the very first time, which my church put money together for me to be able to go to New on the New York the New York trip um, with my high school for my first trip. So I got to go and I saw my very first Broadway show, Beauty and the Beast, which happens to be a Disney on Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And you are a part of the Disney on Broadway family. So you know how you know it's like (laughs) It was like a full circle moment for me, uh, just sort of like seeing my first Broadway show. It also happened to be where I did my first Broadway show, which we could talk about that too, which is crazy, yes. um, how the universe works. Cut to that for me, it was, I was hooked. I was hooked. I was, it was, it was a big Broadway musical and that is what I wanted to do. I was inspired by the song and dance man of it all. You know, the Ginger Rogers, the Fred Astaire, the Sammy Davis Jr., the Savion Glovers, the, you know, the um, Gregory Hines, the Ben yeah. Vereens, the, 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 like the old school of it all. That for me is um, uh, uh, what inspired me. And there, there it was. That that that's kind of how it happened for me. I went to a uh, a college. Uh, I went to St. Louis. I uh, went to Webster University in St. Louis, and where I got my BFA in musical theater. And that is truly while while I was there at my last end of my semester of my senior year. Actually, it was the, the end, the the mid middle of my senior year. I ended up getting the for the the international tour of Fosse. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I, 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 it's crazy how that happened, which the insane, the insanity of that was that, you know, I was graduating from the school and I, they wanted, you know, we were doing our showcase and all of that. And they hadn't had a black male graduate in like, I want to say, I mean, number of years. And wow. so it was a little political in terms of they were like, we want you there. Like you, you know, like, and I get it, you know, obviously I was, and they invested in me, you know, with scholarships and all the things, but ultimately, you know, it was like, well, this is why I'm here was to work. And, yeah. and ultimately it was amazing. They let, let it happen. And then I got my performance credit. I still had to do a religion. I had to do a religion class to finish up one thing. And I'm doing papers in the airports <laughs> while I'm o- overseas and my performance credit it was the national tour of Fosse. So that, uh, the international tour of Fosse, that's how it all really started. And I started my career off as the standby for Ben Vereen in the international tour of Fosse. So Michael. it was a whirlwind of craziness. <laughs> that 
is that is amazing. Like I don't I don't I I don't know anyone. I haven't interviewed anyone yet that can that can give me an, a remarkable story like that. But to have to come from a community that supported you and parents that supported you is so important. I feel for oh development God. and for for just having the freedom to know what your course might be. And then yes. just, you know, you know what I mean? Like it, it's not always the case that someone has the freedom to say, I want to try this. And then there's a support team to let them try it. Absolutely. And, oh my gosh. And you are a triple threat. And it, it makes so much sense when you talk about Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire and Ben Vereen, all these triple threats, because you have that quality. I can see that that's what you admired them and you you wanted to be, you know, of that, that old school, no, I'm a performer through and through. I do it all, you know? I, I'm not just a singer. I'm not just an actor. I'm not just a dancer. I do it all and I do it all well. You really yeah. do. Absolutely. I, one of the things I loved about Fosse, about the, you know, the legendary, the legend that is Bob Fosse, was that he didn't call his dancers dancers. He called them actors. Mm, mm -hmm. um, period. Uh, so, so it was, it was everything, like you said, you know. And so, to me, that was, that that is an that is an inspiring thing because, yes, uh, like I, I when I watch things on television growing up and uh, th this notion of whether that whether they were dancing, whether they were singing, whether they were just, if you will, quote unquote, acting, um, it all felt the same to me. Uh, it all felt like it was uh, a very specific, um, uh, a specific genre in terms of of, of it being the same under mm -hmm. uh, under the umbrella of the same mm -hmm. and not differentiating uh, from the two and not putting yourself in a box which is what what for me uh, had always been a thing uh, in my career that I uh, was not about was about this idea of putting you in a box so you are a dancer who moves you're a, da a singer who moves you're an actor who dances you know like any of that stuff was like no no, 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 no. That's not a not that's not a thing in my in my book. I don't think so at all. And in fact, I'm extremely um, sensitive to that because I feel like there is no there's no uh, the stifling that you will put on yourself by mm. putting yourself in any of those boxes. To me, is a does a disservice to you. That I agree with you. Actually, you are by you saying that you are helping me because yes. I came from, I'm telling you, I came from a background in classical voice and the most right, dancing. You're on the top. You're on the top. Yes, you're I'm on the top. top I'm on the top. No, <laughs> the most dancing I ever would have done would have been like, you know, out in the club with my girlfriends or at a mm -hmm. wedding. And so when I was asked to learn choreography, I always got really nervous and I, just was like, well, I'm I'm not a dancer. I'm not a dancer. I'm a singer, you know. But I never felt that way about acting. I didn't go to school for acting. It I did jobs and I learned a little bit and I took classes outside of a program and it felt natural to me. And mm. but for some reason, this there's so much training involved with dancing, but there's training involved with all the things that we do. But for some reason, I really put myself in a box. And you saying that. I think it's going to help me change my mind about it a bit. So I just wanted to point that out. Good. You are, I mean, hopefully whoever's listening and watching you, you have saved them from years of putting themselves in a box too. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I mean, again, you know, if we don't, if we, if we were to put ourselves in a box, uh, I think we would be, we would be doing the disservice of like what is possible for ourselves and what, and and also something that you actually may enjoy, you know, like there, there's something even with the idea of feeling fearful by it, there actually may be just your like you said about your yoga, you know, and what you what you ended up how it's become so wonderful for you, um, and you look forward to it. And I think that these this this once we get ourselves out of our own box, we 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 discover uh, this amazing thing that we may not ever thought we 
we we had. I mean, that happened for me in so in many roles. There are many, there are a lot of roles that I've done where that has happened. Obviously, in the genie, there's so much of that 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 were in saying aha moments for me about this idea of not being in a box um, that I that I am like just so grateful for and thankful for. I um I actually do have some genie questions, but before that, yeah. I need to know about your your Broadway debut. I don't know a <laughs> thing about it. I'm on your website, like what is it? Tell me what is his bro. I'm gonna have to ask him when we talk because what is yes. Tell me the story. So my Broadway debut was in a show called All Shook Up, which um, was, you know, like at this point, oh my gosh, like now close to almost 20 years, which is crazy. Um, We're at like 17 years ago um, or something, which is just still blows my mind. Um, But it was an original Broadway show. I got to be a part of an original Broadway company for my debut. Um, And, and... I was like one of, I think it was only three of us who were making our debuts in a company of like crazy Broadway (laughs) folks, Mm -hmm. right? And so, (laughs) I mean, just like, the, like Broadway gypsies and and Broadway regulars and Broadway favorites and um, uh, people who were very very well into the Broadway scene stars and uh, you know um, and everything in between and so for me I, I say this I always say this like this idea of it is possible I auditioned for my very first Broadway show from an open call. I went to, I was, I was actually on the first, I closed the first national tour of Mamma Mia. Uh, and we were in Boston at the time. And this was like during, during the summer months. Um, and uh, we, I would take the Chinatown bus from Chinatown, Boston to Chinatown, New York <laughs> at like 12, 20 a.m. in the morning and get into New York about three in the morning. And so would several of my cast members. We were all like to get, you know, I think there were maybe like 10 of us mm-hmm. all doing this every every week and sometimes even more. And everyone was going in on, on uh, to audition for shows. And at that time, I I didn't have an agent. I was just, I was just uh, uh, auditioning and doing whatever. I went in for my first open call um all shook up happened to be my very first open call uh i took the the bus got in signed up on the equity you know as you do when you for those (laughs) for those listeners and viewers out there um just a real quick thing at an equity i'm sure you've discussed this if but it at an equity audition um or a uh, an open call you have to sign up before the call so that you can be on the list and if you're not equity if you're non-equity you know they you have to wait till the end of the day and hope that there's a there's a a time for you to be able to actually if they have time for you to audition but they have all the equity members audition first like you and and you're in groups so it's a whole protocol of like what you have to do and for those of us in the business we know that it's quite a situation yes it's uh (laughs) bring your snacks and wait (laughs) bring your snacks bring your snacks and so i did that i auditioned for all shook up all shook up what happened to be a music that was um that is all elvis music it was a jukebox musical really set to like a shakespearean story um uh and uh and so it was a very sort of like contemporary thing i auditioned as a dancer and uh which was so crazy because i was I mean, I was also a baby, you know, <laughs> um, and I I went in as a dancer. I just decided to just go. I didn't even, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know if it was a dancer call or a singer call, to be honest with you. I had, I just went to the audition and signed up. And so I didn't care about that. I just said, okay, I went to the dancer call, did that, got called back, and I got to sing my 16, uh, sorry, no, 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 no. The 16 was the second time. My 32 <laughs> bar. Okay, my 32 cut. Okay. Um, and I did my my thing and they all, you know, gagged behind the table <laughs> like, oh, okay. I'm like, yes, she sings. <laughs> Because they were like, okay, well, They're well, like, he, okay. he danced, he, he, but, but he let's... Dance. Like, 
Let's, Let's see hear what... if he can hold a note. <laughs> and I, I sang a Stevie Wonder song. Yes. Um, and uh, my 32 bar cut and uh, gagged them all. And <laughs> cut to three auditions later because of callbacks and callbacks for th three separate, separate weeks. Mm -hmm. I got the phone call while I was on the bus on my way back from, because it, again, I'm, remember I didn't have an agent. So they just called me, the casting director called me. It was Craig Burns actually from um, Bernie Telsey, oh. um, agent, which Craig and I still, we ha I, I have a, a special place for in my heart just because he was like the first casting director to call me with, to tell me my, my first Broadway show. Yeah. So I will never forget that moment. But Craig Burns uh, called me. He was actually, he stepped outside of, the, he was auditioning, he was doing auditions for another show. So on a break, he actually called me uh, pers personally because that was the contact numbers that they had. And I was sitting in the back of the bus on my way back to Boston. And he told me that I had gotten the show. And as you can imagine, the screaming big black man in the back of the bus <laughs> probably wasn't the best thing, but it didn't matter. And I didn't care. No, be all and right. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. And that's how I got my first Broadway show. It was like this crazy thing. It happened to be in the same theater where I saw my first Broadway show, the Palace Theater. And coincidentally, it also happened to be where I stayed for the first time. And when I went with my first, uh, when my high school theater or the high school um, trip to New York City, my freshman year of, of high school, we stayed at the Hotel Edison. And and the and and Hotel Edison is on 47 and 46, like it's that whole block. Um, and so you can either enter on enter on 46 or 47. And that the the stage door is on 47th Street of for the Palace Theater. And even more crazy, I I lived on 47th Street between 8th and 9th when I first moved to, wow. to, to New York. So so God, Buddha, Allah, whatever you believe in, like the universe was like, this is, you're not only going to do it, you're going to be in the center of it. Like this is where you are. And I remember at that time when I went, we were not allowed to go to the left, which was towards 8th and 9th. We could only go to the right when we walked out because you might, our teachers were worried about, you know, it was a little bit rougher down in Midtown Eighth during that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? 8th and 9th, like years, at this point, we're talking, I mean, years ago. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't what it is today. And so we were not allowed to go to the left. And coincidentally, I lived to the left. <laughs> <laughs> but you were so all right. That's, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was my debut and you know I'm I am so thankful for my debut because it was again I learned so many things from so many veterans. Um I soaked it up like a sponge. I tell this to to um uh, master classes and things that I've done like ask questions from everyone. You know, mm -hmm. all of the people who are around you, all of the old dolls if you will, <laughs> ask them. You want to know like what's going on? What 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 is it? Like I didn't know all of the, you know, what was th this idea of what, what Broadway was and what, what uh, um, all the sort of insider stuff. I wanted to know, you know, so I asked questions. I soaked up people's, um, you know, how they handled, uh, how they carried themselves in rehearsals, how, they, what, how prepared they were, how, um, how they walked their, how they walked in life, you know, and and who they were as an artist. I just soaked all of that up, and I loved getting to to be a part of that and literally be a, a student, if you will, um, in my debut in this in this dream come true for this little black boy from Orlando. Absolutely, I I think that's such great advice to soak it in, not only the experience while you're experiencing it, but what are the people who inspire you doing? How are they handling themselves on a day to day? You know, I, I felt that way when I was doing Kiss Me Kate. Like I watched Kelly, what yes. she was up to. I was like how she handled rehearsals, how she handled even our sits probe. You know, I, yes. if something wasn't right, she let them know, but she let them know in a way that nobody felt badly afterwards. You know, I was like, this woman is so graceful. Every moment with her was very much a lesson and how she just how she was with the rest of the cast too. I mean, she's a leading lady and still had time, made time for people and didn't really separate herself in, in any kind of way that 
made it feel like she was unreachable, you know? And I just learned a lot from her. And I think there's value. There's a lot of value in, in watching and asking questions and absorbing because we don't know it all. I mean, I don't know it all. Surely. Um, I do. I know all of it. No, <laughs> no, you're absolutely. That's exactly right. Like you don't know it all, and the, it's it's great to 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 you know, and so, as opposed to just responding right away, or as opposed to just being the one to sort of like, oh, I know it, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like to to look around, to sort of take a breath, and and look around, especially when you are, uh, you know, newer to it, and what that what you may learn that you just have no idea idea that the, why certain things have come about. I think that that is, it's an incredible, it was an amazing lesson for me to learn that because I had learned that from also from Ben Vereen at the point when I was a stand, when I stood by for him. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was watching, like you said, his grace and, uh, and being able to literally control a room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just control a room with his power, with his presence mm. and what that actually did for um, and the, the tone that you set and all of that, all of those amazing things. And, you know, that I would always take, but I'm like, if I, and I would say, well, when, when <laughs> I am a, a, you know, a, a leading man or when I am, when I'm, you know, a, a lead on in, in any show, in any company, not just Broadway. You know, mm-hmm. Broadway is amazing. It's not the end all be all. There's yeah. so much incredible theater around this country and around the world. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Broadway is fantastic and it's 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 everything you want it to be and more. But it's there's more to it. And so for me, it was every role, every time I was in a place. Ben also said something to me uh, there that stuck with me. That he said he said to not make theater your life make it a part of your life. And I didn't really understand what that meant when I was like 19. <laughs> um, but now I, 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 I'm so happy that to he- and I had that in my head, you know, for a long, for many, and I still have many, many years. And it's, it's a, it's a thing, you, you know, when Ben Vereen says, come, let's, let's, let's hang out. You you go and you hang out. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Like you, you you do it. You know <laughs> when he would he would have me come to the theater like you know midday when no one was in the theater and we would sit on the stage together in Paris. P.S. We were in Paris, France at the oh Theater du Chatelet, and there I am, a baby. You know, and Ben Vereen is sitting there, and we are he's teaching me about meditation. We're we're talking about life. We're doing material. Like I literally would do monologues for him. He would have me. He's like, okay, do you do a monologue? Let's okay, let's do a song from the show. Okay, let's. Sing, what's in your book? Let's sing this. Well, and there I am, like, like being trained by a master, if you will, you know, in terms of like this, 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 this giant in the, the in the in the theater. And so, you know, you do not, you you can't help but learn. You can't help but but take that in. And there's somebody like on you, you know, somebody in that, that map, that caliber sort of on you. Um, so, you know, I am, I'm grateful for that. And I took, I have tried to take that with me into everything that I do. Michael, that is so amazing. I hate that. I hate that we're in different, we're in different shows. You know what I mean? Cause this is really I like know. our first time really getting to sit down and talk Yes. And I, 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 when you're back on the East Coast, whenever that is, because I'm sure someone's going to be calling you soon, I'm really looking forward to like sitting down again and really getting yes. a chance to, to oh, I just would love that. know you better because I feel like our spirits really mesh well and we, we have similar, um, I can't think of the word right now, but just similar values. Well, there's a- yeah. yeah, some of the values, and there's also a similar energy. So there, I, I, which I appreciate, and it's why it's like when we were, you know, when we did our, the GMA thing, the GMA, um, you know, like all the craziness, <laughs> you know, for all of you listeners and viewers out there, Adrian and I ha- were very like we felt very fiercely fierce <laughs> when we got to be a part of the 25th anniversary, like this Good Morning America 
epic tribute and it was like all three of the Disney on Broadway shows together yeah. um, and all the basically all the um, all the the most of the prince there were principals from each show um, a couple principals from each show representing each, the, the thing and we were in costume we were there together um, and we did this epic epic <laughs> medley <laughs> and adrian was there and i actually remember i think i took the photo of you, the disney princesses like nala and jasmine yes you did yep and and um patty and um uh casey uh, you know anna and elsa i think i took that photo of you all just beautiful and there there's there's the 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 black princess of it all miss miss adrian Right, right Which in is, the middle. Yeah, I can't them. even believe it. You know, um, I didn't grow up with this idea of being a performer. I really didn't pursue theater until I was 24. And so to be on Broadway when I really didn't know what that was or what that meant for the better part of my life is crazy to me. But yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I, but you um, went in that path. You walked in that light and look at where, you know, where, where you, di you didn't say no, you know, you said yes. And you and you and you stepped in into the fear and what that did for you and what that has done for you, I'm sure, is beyond what you could have even imagined for yourself. You know, absolutely. And so that's one. I mean, that that is inspiring in itself when you don't. You, I always find it's interesting, you know, you somebody like me who I was a child actor. It was like the uh, like this. I knew where I wanted to go. Like it was like Broadway, blah, blah, blah. Like by that time, you know, it's amazing to sort of see someone like you where, you know, you were you know, you were doing the opera thing or you were the classical music thing. And just sort of like your, your how life got you to be Nala in you know, the Lion King on Broadway. Like that is, it's just a, it's a wonderful, um, yummy, if you will. My friend says the word, the adjective yummy for things. And I think it's such a, it's such a great way of describing your, uh, th that, that, that idea because it is so yummy and so inspiring and so beautifully fulfilling in the way that I think can inspire a lot of people. I love that. I, I thinking of something as it being yummy because it kind of feels warm and sweet at the same time. And yes, um, yes. I I'm actually curious when you said the the you mentioned saying yes, and mm. I feel like early on in my career, I don't know if you felt this way too, that you felt like whatever opportunity you had, you just needed to say yes. Mm -hmm, did you mm -hmm. ever get to the point where you felt like you needed to start saying no to some things, or did you? always say yes and just went that way? I think, you know, uh, because I say this to parents all the time, I say to just say yes to their kids, you know, and what they are doing and um, sort of seeing who they are going to be and if they're interested, whatever it is, whether it's theater or soccer or science or, you know, to just say yes and let's, just, and let's see what happens, you know? Um, and, and for me, I have, I've had to really um, take that advice for a, a lot because I, there were times where I think fear um, lead, led uh, the idea of sort of saying no to something. And I think that as soon as I, the times that I said that, I, I regretted it. And mm -hmm. so, so more often than not, it has always been, okay, like, you have to say yes, you know, like you just, even if it's like the random things that you're like, I don't know what this is going to come from this, but you do it, which is how the Book of Mormon came about. Um, oh. so, you know, I, I, just, I just said yes to a secret reading of a show that was called the Untitled Musical Theater Project. <laughs> and I literally just said yes. Uh, you know, I had done Jerry Springer, the opera at Carnegie Hall. Uh, and I never thought that I would ever sing the words that I did, let alone belt them <laughs> on the Carnegie Hall stage. And that I would never do anything else like that. I was like, oh, well, this obviously will be the most extreme thing I've ever done in my career. Cut to years later, there I am uh, in the original Broadway company of the Book of Mormon. And the next day after the, the Carnegie Hall, um, you know, Jerry Springer, the, the opera at Carnegie Hall, I'm in a secret reading for a musical that would become the Book of Mormon. I simply said yes. You said so yes, it's, yeah. I said yes. 
I said yes. So it's this, um, when I look back on life, it's why I have to, I have to, even when it scares me, and my husband is a huge advocate with this, and he will say to me, like, well, you have to, you just, well, you have to. You know, when I think about like TV and film and things like that, that I've, that a little bit out of my comfort zone, even though I started in that, Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I left and then that was sort of going back and I'm like, oh my gosh, why do I feel so crazy in this sort of, you know, this, this, this thing. And, and my husband saying to you, well, you have to do it. Like it scares you, you know what I mean? Like you have to do it. Um, and so that's, that's, that's when I, if I look back on life more, the, all the times that I just said yes, are the times that I have flourished. Wow. I, Yeah. That is that is that is some good stuff right there. The times I said yes were the times that I flourished. Yeah. 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 Just yeah, say yeah. yes. From Michael Just James Scott. Yes. Just say yes. Come on, y'all. Just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are moving into our stage door round. And this is okay. a round where I just ask you some questions that you may or may not hear at the stage door. And then we will close out the show and go to the curtain call. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Do you prefer, do you prefer, I can't even speak now. Do you prefer, <laughs> to, <laughs> do you prefer touring or staying in place? Staying in place. Staying in one place. Cause you've done, you've done quite a few tours. Yes. You, oh gosh. I mean, I will say both cause I love traveling. Mm-hmm. I will say touring internationally. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. I will say that I do. I love that because that is, it, it's incredible. And, you know, I got to tour in Australia, but by touring, it was literally Melbourne and Sydney. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I got to be in a, in these amazing places for so long of a time. So, so it's kind of, I kind of answered both, both of them. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you like the touring as long as it's international and you get to sit down for a little bit while you're there. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, your preference, East Coast or West Coast? Oh God, I'm gonna. I'm. I am gonna go East Coast. You're gonna go East Coast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. You kind of already answered this, but no, not really. Not really. TV and film or Broadway, or should I say TV and film or theater? Yeah, I'll do that. I think for me it's theater because I'm uh, there's nothing like the live element to it all. Um, uh, but the interesting thing is that I am in a relationship with a film director, so it is uh, it is a it is a, a, a uh, the wor- my world of it is definitely it's still a part a very big part of my life because of that. But but I think my soul says theater and being on like live theater being on stage yeah i i love theater and i love that you get to do different like you have a chance to do to live in a different production like when i was doing regional theater in chicago it was just so amazing to try like live in a new production every few months or so oh my gosh i love chicago theater Yes. Yeah. Like there's some incredible theater in Chicago. I've done two out of town Broadway tryouts in Chicago where I was there for like three months, four months, like, you know, and so I, and I've gotten to know, I have friends there, um, but there are some amazing theater in, in Chicago. I Well then I know where you're coming from. I know what <laughs> kind of theater, you, I know what foundation you're coming from. If you've given me theater in Chicago, come on now. I love that. That's everything. So my last question for you is just a fun question that I ask everyone. And that is, in the cast of Aladdin, who would you slap, who would you hug, and who would you take to lunch? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, who would I slap? I would slap probably like, you know, the... I would probably slap Iago because <laughs> because it, be, just to see the reaction, like especially when I think about the actor who like Don Daryl playing the the that or any of the other actors who played it in my uh, when I've gotten to do it around the world. 
those actors and like their reaction to the slap, <laughs> like for me would be why I would do it so that I can see how they respond to the slap. <laughs> Oh my gosh, who I would take to, wait, wait, then you said who I would take to. Who would you hug and who would you take to lunch? I would hug, I think I would hug Aladdin um, because, you know, he's just, he's, he's my bromance of the show, you know, Mm -hmm. so um, I would give him a hug and I would take Jafar to lunch. Oh, Jafar needs a lunch. He He needs a lunch. lunch. He needs like. (laughs) You know, like a sit down, like, let's just have a, it's kind of, it's kind of like another hug too, but like, let's just have a nice little lunch. Let's just have a lovely lunch. (laughs) Let's have a woo-saw lovely lunch. Let's just have a woo-saw lovely lunch. (laughs) Michael, I have had so much fun with you. I can't wait to chat with you a little more in the curtain call coming up. If you want to see what Michael is up to, you should follow him at I am MJ Scott on Instagram and Twitter. And when Christmas season rolls around again and you are looking for some tunes, you got to hit that a uh, fierce Christmas so you can bop your way through the Christmas season. Yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Austin, play us out. <laughs>